this is a right side calibre dissection of the upper and lower lumbar segments, medial to lateral and superficial to deep. Superficially, we observe the supraspinous ligament. In a deeper layer, we see the interspinous ligaments in between the thick and short spinous processes of the lumbar vertebrae. Lateral to the spinous process, we see the short lamina with a big interlaminar space. Lateral to the lamina, we see the inferior and superior articular processes. The superior articular process is going to create a facet joint with the adjacent inferior articular process. Lateral to the articular processes, we see this long transverse process. After partially removing the lamina, we expose the ligamentum flavum. The ligamentum flava of the lumbar region is the thickest of the entire spine. Once we remove the ligamentum flavum, we expose the dura covering the cauda cuna, and we all also visualize the exit of the nerve root, which is covered by a dural sleeve. In this segment, we remove the lamina, we remove the articular processes, as well as the transverse process, in order to properly visualize the intervertebral space with the intervertebral disc, the posterior portion of the pedicle, as well as the course of the nerve roots that run in an oblique fashion. This is a posterior view, superior to inferior, medial to lateral, left side, right side. We see the facet joint capsule. We observe the superior articular process matching the inferior articular process of the superior vertebra. The vertebra, the vertebral lamina, superficially the supraspinous ligament, and uh, in, on the right, right side we see the facet joint after removing the capsule. We see an exposure of the nerve root after removing the lamina, transverse process, and the facet joints. We see the posterior portion of the pedicle. And we see how the nerve root runs in an oblique fashion. There are three segments during the exit of this nerve root. The most medial segment is the retrodiscal segment, the parapedicular segment, and the intervertebral foramen itself. Anterior to the transverse process and protecting the lumbar plexus, we can find the psoas major muscle. This is an anterior view, right side, left side. We identify the abdominal aorta with a couple of its branches. It's bifurcation of as a common iliac artery, right side and left side, and a medial sacral artery coming out of the abdominal aorta. The common iliac arteries are going to give off external and internal, internal iliac arteries. And on the right side, we see the inferior vena cava with external and internal iliac veins draining into this vein. Laterally, we observe the psoas major on the left side and on the right side. We see the ureter as well as the genitofemoral nerve lying lateral to the ureter. Usually this bifurcation happens at the level of L4, L5 or even L5, S1. This is important when planning to approach any portion of the lumbar region from an anterior perspective since it might require some kind of mobilization either of the abdominal aorta or the iliac vessels. This is an oblique view. What we're seeing here, this is the anterior portion of the lumbar region. 
with the anterior longitudinal ligament attached to the bodies of the vertebrae and we see the lumbar arteries that arise from the posterior lateral aspect of the aorta and run laterally along the center of the anterior and lateral aspect of the vertebral bodies. We identify again the ureter, the sympathetic trunk, and laterally the genitofemoral nerve. We see the intervertebral space with the L4, L5 disc. We see the left common iliac vein, as well as external and internal iliac vessels. We see a retraction here over the psoas major in order to expose a little bit more of the anterior lateral portion of the vertebral bodies.